Welcome back. All right, so um, back on the main set. Here we are. Uh, and made a couple of minor changes for the camera, but major changes for me, which give me more room. At any rate, um, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Tuesday, January the 16th. We're over halfway through the month of January. I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that. It's gotten a little bit warmer outside, but not a lot. So hopefully the warmer air starts moving across towards the eastern parts of Canada where it's it's just been really cold. Anyways, news of the day video. Let's start off talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, Steven Stamkos. All the discussions of Stamkos. He's UFA this summer. Seen people saying that it's not very respectful of them to not have a conversation with Stamkos about extending. Uh, but he's not getting traded. Uh, Julian Breesbaugh coming out and saying today he will not be traded before the deadline. It's not going to happen. They'll sit down after the season's done and evaluate where they're at and where he fits in and what the plan is going forward. There's a lot of risk there. Obviously, there's a risk he could leave, but by coming out and saying we're not going to trade him, it's also telling Stamkos he can relax. He's staying where, he's, where he is. Uh, and we've seen before, you know, as Stamkos counted down the last time he was going to be a free agent, it was towards the start of the time this channel was a thing. And there was a lot of speculation about where he might go. He might go to Toronto. He might go to Dallas, wherever. And in the end, he just re-signed in Tampa. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen again. Obviously, now he's a lot older than he was then, so the excitement wouldn't be the same. But still, um, I think he'll probably stay in Tampa Bay. But we'll see. Now, on injury news, Sergachev, they've confirmed, will be out until after the All-Star break. So it was a day-to-day, -day, and then it was kind of a week-to-week, -week, and now it... It's turned into a long-term injury. This is the thing about dealing with injuries in the National Hockey League. You try to report on them. Uh, the, the the injury news just kind of starts out as, eh, it's day-to-day. -day. We don't know exactly what it is. He just doesn't feel happy today. And then eventually it's, oh, yeah, and we forgot. His leg was broken. That happened a couple months ago. Anyway, so hopefully Sergachev is back. February 7th may be the return date. Uh, that's a long time for him to be out. So we'll see how Tampa Bay does between now and then. Uh, redeems the Hornas on waivers for Pittsburgh. I'm not overly surprised. He had a really good start to the season, but has been much quieter lately. Uh, the Penguins, I think they'll be able to get him through waivers. I don't think anybody picks him up. Uh, he did move through a few teams last year, though. We'll see if, if he moves through uh, waivers without any issue uh, this season, or if a team maybe looking for a forward might pick him up. So uh, we'll see. But let me know your thoughts. Where do you think he ends up, or do you think he clears? Uh, Kyle Connor has been activated by the Winnipeg Jets. That's the good news side of it. On the other side of it, shifley has been placed on IR. So this is another injury that, uh, it's day-to-day. -day. No big deal. He might play tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, and he's on the injured reserve. So I, I don't expect transparency from teams. I don't even expect honesty at this point from teams when it comes to injuries. Um, but yeah, Kyle Connor activated. Him being back in the lineup for the Winnipeg Jets should be great for them. I like Connor quite a bit. Uh, they're coming off that loss, of course, a couple days ago, uh, playing against the Islanders. I understand they haven't had a great record against the Islanders for a while now, but this Winnipeg team is on quite the run, and the Islanders, it feels like, are going in the other direction. So we'll see how that one goes tonight. Jacob Markstrom, lower body injury for Markstrom of the Calgary Flames. Uh, Wolf has been recalled. So, of course, we're going to have to keep an eye on Markstrom, too, because with the rumors out there, you know, potentially of him being traded, uh he can't be injured he's got to be 100 percent. so it's in the best interest of the team to make sure that anytime he feels any kind of twinge or anything that doesn't feel quite right you, know, you set him out then and make sure he's 100 percent uh for the trade deadline so we'll see if that does happen i remember as i said in the news video yesterday he has a full no movement clause he's not going anywhere unless he agrees to it uh jason dickinson again the chicago blackhawks uh, they're in the midst of this rebuild, and you would think they'd be selling at the deadline, but they extended Felino. Now they've extended Jason Dickinson. Kind of a surprise to me. It's a two-year extension for Jason Dickinson. Cap hit of $4.25 million. He's been very good for Chicago, arguably outside of Bedard, maybe their most consistent, dangerous forward. I guess Kershev would be in that conversation too. But again, it's not a long-term deal, so I don't think it's a, a, a problem for them, but I'm kind of surprised that they're not going to shop him at the deadline. And with that cap hit for the next two years, I don't think he'd be a popular target at the deadline either if they did decide to make him available. But yeah, Chicago doing things a little different. We saw that in the offseason when they signed Perry and Felino to 
big money contracts and now they're doing it a little different again we'll just have to see how it all works out for them uh patrick kane is going to miss at least the rest of the road trip for detroit uh, it's a lower body injury again it's not supposed to be the hip so he'll be out for tomorrow's game at florida and then friday's game at carolina those are not easy games uh, even with him in the lineup, those aren't easy games. So for Detroit, who are right in that conversation right now for a wild card spot, uh, and I say right in that conversation because from day to day, it changes. It changes fast. These teams are all close to one another in points. It's kind of great to watch from day to day, uh, but Detroit needs to get those wins, and Florida and Carolina are teams that you know they're looking to chase down, and now they're going to have to do it without Patrick Kane in the lineup. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Mad Sogard is starting tonight for the Ottawa Senators. Jacques Martin, uh, really impressed with the stats he's put up in the AHL, feeling that they have a good chance to win with him in the net, saying he's playing really well. And we've seen Sogard have good starts in the National Hockey League. Uh, we'll see how tonight goes for him and for the Ottawa Senators. Obviously, if the Sens are going to have any hope of... I, I can't. I can't. Uh, if, if they're going to have a good second half of the season and have some feel-good moments... Uh, they're they're going to need the goaltending to be a little bit better than it's been so far this season. So I'm fine with giving Sogard the look and see what you got there. Uh, don't be surprised if Mandelisi comes up at some point too because why not? See what you've got. See what you got in the pipeline. You just never know. Um, sometimes you find an Andrew Hammond who goes on a bit of a run, right? So why not? It doesn't hurt. They're eight games below 500. Really, it can't hurt to, to give him a shot. So we'll see how things go for him tonight. Um, and Elvis today confirmed that he's requested a trade. And I, I think it's good that he's confirmed it because when they were saying, you know, he needs a new situation and he said he wasn't a backup goalie, nobody ever actually came out and said Elvis has asked for a trade. It was just he needs a new situation, which could mean moving him into a new apartment, um, getting him new pads, um, whatever, right? Uh, so at, at least he's he's cleared that up and yeah he's confirmed he's asked for a trade he has signed through 2027 the cap hits 5.4 million dollars uh, i would think columbus would probably have to retain half of that to get him moved and even then uh it's going to be interesting to see how columbus makes that work if in fact they do trade him but it does look like columbus wants to go with tarasov in the second half of the season and really give him the net spencer martin would then be the backup which would leave Elvis as the third goaltender, the third man out. And while we have seen three goalie rotations working in the NHL, clearly Elvis is not happy with the idea of being a healthy scratch at times. We've seen Montreal make it work. Honestly, of the, the, the three goalie situations, I think Montreal's done the best job with it. With Allen, Montembeau, and Primo, I think they've done the best. Uh, Detroit, they've had injured goalies. Uh, they've definitely had stretches where one goalie just isn't playing. And, yeah, I think Montreal's done well. So Elvis doesn't have any interest in being part of a three-goalie rotation, which I understand two goalies don't like three-goalie rotations because, yeah, you're going to have a healthy scratch and it's a bit crowded. You want to have two goalies. Uh, but the goalie market's going to be something to watch at the trade deadline. I think there's going to be a lot that get moved. And then in the offseason, we'll probably see a lot of them move again. So it is quite the goalie carousel the National Hockey League has, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.